time now to open the notebook for This Week in Baseball's Twib Notes from Around the Majors. Hi folks, welcome back to another week at Sidetracks Board Game Club in Elwood City. We got another fun week on tap. Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, we'll have our after school clubs from 3 to 5. If you've got kids that are interested in finding something fun to do and, and spending some time with friends after school, have them come on down and check us out. On Thursday night, we have our game and sip night. It's BYOB. So bring a friend, come on down, hang out, play some games. And on Friday, we're going to be starting something new. We're, we're taking a page from the movie theater notebook and we're going to be having a feature presentation every Friday night. This Friday, for our first round, the feature game is going to be Lords of Waterdeep. If that's a game that, that you'd be interested in trying out and you want to get in, we're going to have a special teaching session. We'll be, we'll be starting at 6.30 on Friday night. So what you need to do is follow us on Facebook, and we're going to be posting a Facebook event. Be one of the first four people to respond in the comments to that uh, event with the word quest, and you'll get a seat at the table for Friday night's game. Each week we'll be featuring a different game. So if you see something that interests you, respond with the keyword for the week and that'll get you into uh, at the featured table. Now we'll also still have open gaming. So anybody's welcome to come in on Friday night from six to nine and play some games. Saturday we'll also have open gaming from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Today's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, all the way from Sesame Street, Cookie Monster. A one, a two, a three. So last week during the seventh inning stretch, we talked about theme and mechanics and how you can categorize different games in different ways. And that can kind of help you identify which types of games you like the best. Another way to think about games, and, and one of the reasons I think people are sometimes turned off and they say, oh, I, I don't really like games, is because they're only used to American style traditional games that they grew up with. And so if you think of games like Monopoly or Risk or Axis and Allies, um, even Careers, which was one of, a game that I liked when I was a kid, Cosmic Encounter, these are games that, first of all, there's often dice involved and so it's pretty deterministic. You roll a die and whatever happens, you're stuck with that. You, you, there's not a lot of player agency. There's not a lot of decision making. You know, you roll the dice and you're at the mercy of the dice a lot of times. Also, there's often a lot of conflict in these games. The way you win is by beating the crap out of the other people, which can leave you feeling pretty bad. And, and you know, everybody around the table, even when I win, I don't feel great because in order to do it, I had to beat up on everybody else. And when I lose, you know, obviously I don't feel good about that. Also, a lot of times these games have player elimination. And so in Monopoly, you can get knocked out when you go bankrupt and risk, you can uh, get wiped off the map and then you just sit there and watch everybody else play the game. Or sometimes even worse, you could be stuck in a game knowing that you're dead and you have no chance of winning at all. And yet you got to sit there for another hour or two hours and just take it. and that's no fun either and so if those are the types of games you're used to and the types of games that you grew up playing obviously yeah you might have a bad taste in your mouth but there's sort of a another end of the spectrum uh, on, on that end of the spectrum uh, people may categorize those as Amerithrash games or American style games where you're thrashing your opponents some people call it Ameritrash games uh, because you know, it has sort of all these different negative aspects to the games. But uh, in the post-World War II era, there's a whole different genre of games that started to come out, and it's centered in Germany. Um, and a lot of these games, are, they call, they're, they're categorized as Euro-style board games. So you may hear people say Euro-style, and you're wondering, what does that mean? And in a Euro-style board game, a lot of the emphasis tends to be more on the mechanics of the game than the theme but they're often characterized by a lot less player conflict. So you think about Germany after World War II, they're not looking you know, to generate a lot of conflict. That, they wanna put that in the past. And so their emphasis at that time was making gaming really a family, sort of a staple of family life and a staple of family um, get togethers and things. And so you want people to have a good time. So a lot of these Euro-style games, they, they reduce the amount of conflict involved. There's 
increased strategy, increased uh, player agency. So you have a lot of different decisions you can make. And in most cases, the winner is going to be determined by victory points, whoever has the most victory points during the game. And you can take multiple paths to get victory points. So one person may decide to do X, Y, and Z while I'm over here doing A, B, and C. And at the end of the game, we'll see who did it best and, and we're going to compare our victory points. Now, these games can be competitive and sometimes there's going to be interaction. There's going to be some player interaction, like you're competing for the same resources or you may even be competing for certain places on the board. But it's not a lot of head-to-head -head interaction where you're beating up on other people. A lot of times too, it's not clear during the game who, who the winner is. And so, which is nice because it keeps you engaged in the game. It keeps you interested. If I'm in Monopoly and I know that guy over there has got all the red properties and all the yellows, he's building houses and hotels, and I'm sitting over here with a couple of utilities in Baltic, I got no chance. And so, you know, what am I gonna do but sit there and, and just, you know, pray for the end to come quickly, right? In these games, a lot of times you don't know who's winning. So I'm going to keep trying, I'm going to keep plugging away, and at the end of the game we add up the scores and then we'll figure out who won. Some of these games even have uh, variable win conditions. So the game end may be triggered by one thing or it may be triggered when something else happens. There's uh, often not as many dice in these games, but there's still a lot of randomness in these games. You may have decks of cards that you're pulling from, or in a lot of cases the, the, the board setup is, is randomized which is really cool because then, unlike a game like chess or checkers, which is the same game every single time, you start with the same exact board, you know, and so you can study starting moves and things like that. In a lot of cases, these boards are randomized at the beginning, and so every game is gonna be different. And so everybody starts out sort of on a level playing field because you, you've probably never played this particular combination before because the cards you're getting and the, 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 the locations on the board are different every single time. So it makes it interesting because there's still that randomness and variability, but it's not necessarily a luck-based thing. And so when I think about it, when I think about that spectrum between American-style games and Euro games, I think of it kind of like the Three Stooges and Downton Abbey. At least for me, I tend to work. I, I, I tend to like Euro style games where there's not as much direct conflict uh, and and there's a little bit more strategy. There's more player agency as opposed to those ones that are just kind of like silly fun and you're beating up on each other and there's a lot of luck and randomness involved. But these days, there's a lot of stuff in the middle. It, it's hard to necessarily categorize something strictly as a Euro game or as a, an American style game these days because. Um, both of these things have sort of blended together and so there's a lot of hybridization in the middle and so anyway you know when you're looking for games or if, if you're one of those people who played those old style games when you're a kid and you're like no, that's no fun why would I want to do that you really should try out some of these new euro style games and and some of these new hybrid games because they they add a lot there's a lot more to offer they're a lot more fun and engaging than the old style don't forget that this month our tournament is the game Seven Wonders and it's sponsored by Elwood City Collectibles. So be sure to go up and check them out. And also, if you're interested in getting in on that tournament, come on in, get practiced up, should be a good time. Also, look out for us next weekend at the Earth Day Festival in Ewing Park. Sidetracks will have a booth set up. We're gonna be featuring nature-themed games and we're also going to be talking a little bit about how the board game industry has trying to become more environmentally conscious with the way they produce their games and some of the stuff that they put out. So if you want to stop by and say hi, we'd love to, to talk with you and we'd love to show you some of the really cool games that we have with nature themes. So we hope you'll come on down, join us at the table this week and play some games. See ya.